We just want to show our viewers what the map looked like after he was done. The uh, famous 99 counties that all the candidates and the, the sitting elected officials there try to reach. I mean, look at that. Look at that. All red. Only one that Nikki Haley won. And you know what? It was by one vote. 1,271 for Nikki Haley, 1,200 for 79, I should say. The votes are not yet certified. It was also in Johnson County, where Iowa City is, the University of Iowa, the most liberal county in Iowa. Omar, I mean, just look at the demographics that he won. Almost all of them, Republicans, independents, conservatives, men, women, urban, suburban, rural, 30 to 44-year-olds, 45 to 64-year-olds, 65 White evangelicals, it goes on and on and on and on. But I just do want to underscore college graduates and non-college graduates. The college graduates part, uh, like some of the other uh, demographics in here that he won, is um, historically not his strongest suit, but he won them last night. Moderate and liberal uh, people who describe themselves that way in the entrance poll last night. Nikki Haley did get 63%, uh, far more than Donald Trump and certainly everybody else. I do want to start with what happened in Iowa last night. Donald Trump won 98 of the 99 counties. He won registered independents, college-educated men and women, non-college-educated men and women, the cities, the suburbs, the rural areas. Can there be any doubt that right now the Republican Party is Donald Trump's party? Look, I mean, Iowa's always been a pro-Trump state, and it's exactly what we expected. We always knew that Trump was going to get a high number there. That big? I yeah. Mean, that's historic. No, I mean, I think it's Iowa. It's a very... There's actually three people in the race. Can I just push back? Because if I'm Donald Trump, I look at those results and say, it's not a one-on-one -on -one race. It's, a, it's me, and then everybody else is so far in my rearview mirror, I can't even see them. I mean, are we really at the point that we're going to put two 80-year-olds as our options? I mean, with all due respect, that's fine, but we need to move forward. And just last night, as an example, when you look at the demographics, the only area that you won is with was with moderates and in, and independents sort of the more liberal side of the spectrum and even some who aren't republicans how do you win a republican contest when that is the area in which you're winning we can't uh lose sight of the fact that donald trump didn't just win in iowa he, he crushed everyone else it was an historic win and 98 of the 99 counties uh, doing well in almost not just doing well winning in almost every demographic, including those that he almost never does well in. The White House, of course, moving on there to New Hampshire after Donald Trump's historic landslide win in the Iowa caucuses, where he got more than half the vote, besting Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley by 30 points or more. Trump winning in nearly every voter category and in 98 out of the 99 Iowa counties. Just look at all of that red. That one yellow county, Johnson County, unbelievable. Welcome to The Lead, I'm Jake Tapper. We start in our 2024 lead. Cue the music. The election jam is underway. A runaway victory for Donald Trump last night in the Iowa Republican caucuses. Trump's victory, the strongest showing for any non-incumbent in the modern era of the Iowa caucuses since the 1970s, with Trump winning 51% of the vote. That is 10 points higher than the previous record. George W. Bush won 41% in 2000. And turnout for Trump was sweeping. He, he won every single county in Iowa, except one, that one in yellow you see there, Johnson County, Nikki Haley won, 99 counties, but Johnson County wasn't one. This time, however, he won, handily and legitimately. And Trump did not just win 98 of Iowa's counties. According to exit polls, he won the male vote. He won the female vote. He won among all age groups above the age of 30. He won the evangelicals. He won college-educated and non-college-educated among almost every single group of voters, Donald Trump won. And, you know, Donald Trump won last night. And what did he do, you know, to celebrate that victory? He didn't go to Disneyland. He had to go to court. Last night, we got insight into this looming question. Would the four indictments and 91 criminal charges facing Donald Trump matter to voters? And last night, a majority of Republican voters in Iowa said, nope. Ramaswamy did find popularity in part by saying things such as this. Take a listen. The January 6th now increasingly looks like it was an inside job of entrapment involving our own federal government. I'm sure the boogeyman white supremacist exists somewhere in America. I've just never met him. <laughs> never seen one. Never met one in my life, right? Maybe I'll meet a, uh, maybe I'll meet a unicorn sooner. 
What do you make of the fact that, I mean, his message obviously didn't catch fire exactly, but, he, you know, he lasted longer than uh, a lot of more established uh, and respected candidates. From domination in Iowa to defamation in New York, hours after his historic 30-point victory in the Iowa caucuses, Donald Trump is in a federal courtroom in Manhattan for his second E. Jean Carroll civil defamation trial. There's also been a lot of questions about donations. There were um, three jurors who said that they donated to Donald Trump's campaigns or PACs supporting him. And there were about 10 who said that they donated to either President Obama, um, Hillary Clinton, or President Biden's campaign. Thanks.